did a lot of mathematics, quite complicated mathematics, to actually then show that Newton's equations couldn't be easily solved, and that the only thing you could really say about the problem and about the solar system was that it would be stable. But actually, that was enough. That's all the King of Sweden needed to know. So he won the money. But he also changed our view of what it means to make a useful prediction of what kind of things you want to predict. You don't really want to be predicting exactly what's going to happen to all of the planets in 10 years' time. What you really want to know is, are they still going around? And are they still going around the sun? But he also discovered what was wrong with everybody else's approach to the same problem. And to show you what Poincaré demonstrated, I need a volunteer. Could you come down? And your name is? Edmund. Edmund. Could you stand there, please, Edmund? Yeah. Just stand over here against the desk, face over there. Now, Edmund, we've both got pendulums here. So what I want you to do is come a little bit closer. Left hand. Just hold that pendulum above that red dot. We've got exactly the same pendulums, and we're going to put them over the same position of this card. And I'm going to count down from three and say now. I'm going to say now, just release the pendulum. OK? Three, two, one, now. OK, so we both set off our pendulums at the same time. Not going in the same direction. Same pendulum. But I think you can clearly see that they're certainly not doing the same thing now, are they, Edmund? No, they're not. Thank you very much, Edmund. So what Edmund helped me to show is what Poincaré said, is that even though you think you've got exactly the same starting conditions for these two pendulums, they rapidly diverge. They rapidly differ in what they actually do. And the important consequence for the calculation of the planets in the solar system is that you can never exactly know the position of the planets. And so any small error will build up over time. And quickly, your predictions will become inaccurate. You may actually have heard of this kind of effect. It's called a butterfly effect. Actually, that's another name just for chaos theory. And it's the idea that very small changes can cause, have dramatic consequences in the future. Very much like a butterfly, say, flapping its wings in Singapore, will affect the weather on New Year's Day for the new millennium here in Britain. I hope we don't get any of that. So is that it? We should just end the lecture. Things become unpredictable when there are more parts to them or when there's some kind of outside influence, like with the magnetic pendulums. We can never hope to predict anything. Chaos theory rules. Things are either very regular, like a pendulum, or completely irregular and unpredictable. Well, that can't be right. After all, we're sitting here in a reasonably ordered way. Our lives are reasonably ordered. There's life on Earth. That's something reasonably ordered. So it can't be that nature just lives in a completely regular or completely irregular state. So that's what we've got to investigate. How can order arise? How can where, do, where does nature actually live with respect to this order and disorder, this predictability and complete unpredictability? For this, I need a volunteer. Come down. Your name is? Danny. Danny. Just stand here, please, Danny. Danny, we're going to do some balancing. Okay? What I'd like you to do is just try and make this stick stand up on the desk. Oops. It's a bit unfair on you. 
because I've never been able to do it. In fact, I don't think it's possible. OK, just stand there. Now what I'd like you to do, instead of standing it up on the desk, where it could have fallen all over the place and it was really hard to actually know what would happen to it, I want you to try and support it with your hand and see if you can now make it stand up. Well, let's have another go. Yes, that's better. Yes, well done. OK, well done. Well, you're so good at that. Might have a go with two, Danny. So just try and hold this up. I'll just try and help you. Whoops. No, doesn't look like it's going to work, does it? So I guess three's out of the question. Yeah. OK, right. Well, thanks very much, Danny. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's out of the question. There's no way you could expect to make these stand up, to put some order into these rods. In fact, let's just imagine that. I haven't got more than three rods here. So let's imagine I had a whole bunch of them that are really quite small, and I connected them together. It seems impossible that I should be able to make them stand up in my hand. In fact, here we've got a little bit of curtain wire, which is, you can think of as very many rods connected all together. And um, I don't think there's any way that I'll be able to do it. Well, maybe I'm just not supplying energy in the right way. Maybe I'm not affecting the system in the right way. So instead of having my hand ache while I try to make this stand up, what we have over here is actually a motor. It will do the same job as my hand. Actually supply energy, and it actually vibrates up and down. So now let's see what happens with this. It works. <laughs> Take the energy out, and down it goes. Now, somehow there was order being created because of the supply of energy from the outside. So we need to understand something about this order, how it's created in time, what kind of patterns an order can emerge when energy is supplied. Turns out that the person who started these Christmas lectures, Michael Faraday, was actually the first person to investigate the patterns that emerged when a system was held out of equilibrium, in other words, when it, energy was supplied to it. He was more interested in motors, electric motors. But here we have a piece of equipment which will demonstrate what he found. Instead of using a motor, I'm actually going to bow this plate, which has sand on it. And we'll see what happens. So again, I'm supplying energy. And we'll see what happens. can see a pattern emerges. 